At the beginning of last week, we asked you which other countries you'd like to see make it to a TLDR design shirt. We collated your votes and the winner was Germany. If you want to pick up a German design t-shirt, as well as our two other new designs, then head over to our merch store, where you can also find all of our other merch, including the order shirt. Order! Order! The German t-shirt is only available for one month, so make sure you check it out. There's a link in the description. Welcome to another Brexit Explained video. Today we're going to look at whether the utter chaos and disagreement that surrounded Brexit will discourage other countries from trying to leave the EU. In case you haven't been watching our videos religiously, or have just been hiding in a cave for the best part of the last three years, Brexit has been a bit of a disaster. Regardless of whether you think we should leave or stay, very few people have been happy with the process thus far. This hasn't been helped by the fact that the UK's stance on Brexit implies a lot of contradictory things, which has meant that, surprise surprise, it's been a bit of an omni-shambles. So, in this video we'll be looking at whether this has discouraged other Eurosceptic countries from following suit. Before we dive in, I should say that all polling on this topic is notoriously unreliable. Different polls say different, even contradictory things, so it's difficult to get an accurate or reliable sense of what a population thinks. We have references for all of the polls which we've used, but just be wary because none of this is conclusive. Also, it's impossible to prove any causal links between polling and Brexit. As always, correlation doesn't equal causation. Just because there's an increase in Europhilia that coincides with Brexit timing-wise doesn't necessarily mean that everyone is so impressed with how the EU has handled Brexit, even though that could be a plausible explanation. So, as always, take these stats with a pinch of salt. So, qualifiers aside, what effect has Brexit had on Euroscepticism? Well, according to the EU's biannual report known as the Eurobarometer, it seems to have actually made other EU countries more pro-EU. In 2016, when the Brexit vote happened, about 65% of people living in the EU said they identified as a citizen of the EU, while 35% didn't. In the most recent Eurobarometer report, which came out in November 2018, more than 70% said they felt like an EU citizen, while less than 30 didn't. In 2016, only 34% of EU citizens said that they had a positive image of the EU. In 2018, that's increased to 43% with a positive image. Equally, in 2016, 27% of EU citizens had a negative image of the EU, which has now dropped to 20%. I know that was just a barrage of numbers and stats, but basically, in the last two years since the referendum, Pro-EU sentiment has actually increased throughout Europe. This has meant that most people think that the chances of another country leaving the EU has decreased. In 2016, some 48% of EU citizens thought that another country would follow the UK out of the door. This has subsequently fallen to 42%, according to an Ipsos Mori poll. Interestingly, Brits actually think it's more likely that another country will follow. According to the same Ipsos polling, 60% of Brits think another EU country will leave soon, compared to 48% who thought that in 2016. So, if British people are right, who could be the next person out of the door? Well, we think there's sort of four countries that could potentially make the leap. Italy, Hungary, Sweden and Greece. If you disagree with our list, then comment down below. And if your comment gets enough attention, we might do a video on that particular country's chance of leaving. Anyway, let's start with Italy. Italy is currently under coalition government between the Five Star and League who are led by Luigi Di Maio and Matteo Salvini, respectively. Both have been vocal critics of the EU, especially on immigration and austerity, so it makes sense that some commentators have pinned them down as the next country to leave the EU. In fact, recently, William Hill was offering pretty good odds of 2 to 1 on Italy being the next country to leave the EU. However, it's worth noting that both Di Maio and Salvini, and Salvini especially, have actually ruled it out in December, saying we have no intention of leaving the EU. We want to change it, improve it, but not abandon it. It's not a popular opinion with the Italians either. While they're more Eurosceptic than most, according to a 2018 Parlamenter poll conducted by the EU, only 24% of Italians would vote to leave the EU. However, this should be taken with a pinch of salt, as the same poll found that only 35% of Brits would vote to leave, which is suspiciously low. Another reason that it's harder for Italy to leave is that they use the euro. A return to the lira would have massive short-term economic consequences. No one at TLDR is a proper economist, but this would clearly cause a whole lot of economic disruption. Basically, an Italy exit doesn't look very likely right now, but it's not impossible. Alright, so on to the next country, Hungary. 
Hungary has been in the news a whole lot recently, with its strongman president Viktor Orban, leader of the Fidesz party, whose political system of choice is apparently a liberal democracy. He's been a vocal critic of the EU's migration policy, and in 2018, the EU voted to deny Hungary its EU voting rights, claiming that it was backsliding on European democratic values, using legislation known as Article 7 to take away Hungary's right to vote. Adding to this, the Hungarian government is currently in a coalition between Fidesz and the Christian Democratic People's Party, who are also Eurosceptic. So surely, Hungary could be next. Well, no. Basically, while Euroscepticism is popular among politicians, it's definitely not popular amongst the electorate. According to the same parliamentary poll we mentioned earlier, only 17% of Hungarians would vote to leave the EU, versus 61% who'd vote to stay. A different poll conducted by Pew found that only 13% wanted to leave. A major reason why Hungary might not be keen to leave is that it receives more than 4.5 billion euros per year in EU contributions, and only pays in 500 million euros. This means that its net receipts are over 3.5 billion euros per year from the EU. In a country with a relatively small GDP of 123 billion euros and a national budget of about 50 billion euros, this is a massive amount of money it's getting from the EU, which Hungary won't want to give up. So like Italy exit, Hungary exit shouldn't happen. Not least because it's an unbelievably ugly portmanteau. On to the next country, Sweden. Sweden has been a popular talking point especially in the American media, touted as a case study on the failures of democratic socialism. According to this narrative, Sweden has taken on more migrants than it can handle, and it's gone from a socialist utopia to a hellhole of violent crime and rape. Whether there's a causal relationship between immigration and violent crime rates is a whole separate video. So like this video and comment below if you'd like us to do a video on that. But whatever the case is, the Swedish electorate has shifted right. In the 2018 general election, the Swedish Democrats, a far-right Eurosceptic party, became the third largest party in the Swedish parliament, with 17.6% of the total vote. In their manifesto, they pledged to hold a referendum on leaving the EU, and blame the EU for the migrant crisis. So is there any chance of this EU vote actually happening? Well, again, no. The two largest parties in Sweden have committed to a policy of non-cooperation with the Swedish Democrats, which means they're unable to force their referendum onto the agenda. Although the EU party got 17.6% of the vote in the general election, Sweden is one of the most Europhilic countries around. In fact, 53% of Swedes have a positive image of the EU, while only 11% have a negative image, according to the most recent Eurobarometer. Sweden also has the highest level of trust in the EU of all member states. Save for some drastic turnaround, there's no chance of a Swexit anytime soon. On to the last big one, Greece. I know that lots of you will already know about this, but Greece is in the middle of a debt crisis. There's a whole load of complicated economic reasons why, but basically, Greece owes the EU a lot of money after they bailed them out of a sovereign debt crisis after the 2017 financial crisis. The various European authorities and private investors have loaned Greece a massive 320 billion euros, and Greece expects to be paying this back until 2060. In 2015, Greece was actually planning on leaving the EU. This comes down to economics, and again, we're not economists, but we're going to try and explain it anyway. The plan was to leave the EU and return to the drachma. As part of the Eurozone, Greece struggles to secure outside investment. If you've got euros, then you can spend them anywhere in the eurozone. So it makes more sense to invest them in a company like Germany, where the economy is strongest. Why spend them somewhere else? However, if Greece were to return to the drachma, the currency would be allowed to naturally devalue. Because people want Greek money less than German money, the drachma would be allowed to fall until it was at a competitive rate. In theory, this would make Greek exports more competitive and increase foreign investment. However, that would be a pretty steep devaluation. The National Bank of Greece estimated that the drachma would fall by 65%. This would make Greeks a heck of a lot poorer in the short term, with some drastic consequences. According to the same study, unemployment would rise to about 33%, and inflation would skyrocket to 30%, which would bring similarly high interest rates. With a devalued currency and super high interest rates, most Greeks would default on their mortgages and loans, which would cripple banks and lenders. 
Basically, there's a lot of short-term pain. And that probably explains why it's not the most popular position amongst either Greek politicians or Greek people, or the Greek people. No main parties are actually considering it anymore. And while Greeks have a fairly negative image of the EU, the majority, 61%, don't want to leave the union. The time for Grexit has probably passed. If it was ever going to happen, it would have happened already. Probably in 2015, when 61% of the Greek people voted in a referendum to reject the IMF bailout plans. Despite this vote, the government went ahead with the bailout, and Greece remained in the EU. So basically, it doesn't look like anyone else is going to be leaving the EU anytime soon. However, this might change once Britain's relationship is finally agreed. Once Britain sorted out its relationship with the EU, it provides another potential model for non-EU countries, alongside the Norwegian, Turkish, Swiss and Canadian models. If this turns out to be an arrangement that other countries want, like maybe securing some sort of single market access without the freedom of movement, then it might tempt other EU countries to exit. Do you agree with our list? Do you think your country is likely to leave the EU sometime soon? Comment below to let us know and we might get onto it soon. To be kept up to date with everything in the world of Brexit, make sure to subscribe to our channel. You can also follow us across our other social channels to be updated whenever we post exclusive content or articles. You can find us by searching for TLDR News.